camera? Everything cool? Titties out? Anything looking bad? Oh. oh. Give me one second. This is one of my guests. Um, we live, y'all. You got to hold on. It's one of my guests. I got to handle this. <laughs> it's live. These niggas know we live. Shit. It's going to take them a while to, um, to, to join us anyway. Go ahead. Get your water. Your wine. Because we have a really, really good show in store for us. I'm gonna actually going to text you the, her number. We have a really, really good... Uh, here, take my phone for a second. We have a really, really good show in store for us, for you guys. We're going to be doing... Hold on one second, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Her name is ADOCA. She's calling to get in there. Hey, sexy! Oh, my God! Okay, I'm ready. All right. Play back. Let's go back. It was loud. That's what we do. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to episode nine. You guys, we are on episode nine. Can you believe it? We started this journey all the way the week of uh, Father's Day. And I was just talking to one of my guests about my journey and what brought me here. And I cannot believe that we are on episode nine. So I am extremely excited about this episode for actually a lot of reasons. Um, It's if those of you that don't know episode now, we're going to be talking about mental health, facing the demons and keeping it real. We have some professionals on uh, set with us today, as well as in the audience. Um, those of you that are know someone that could really use this show, make sure you share the page, guys. Um, you will have an opportunity to ask your own questions um, and really, really start your journey. To but... As you know, I can never ever start my show without my backbone, my booski, my big booty best friend. Give it up for my B and B corner, y'all! <laughs> oh shit! How are you? I'm doing wonderful. And how are you? You look amazing as usual. Yeah, so do you in all yellow. Cities you guys are popping. Know her birthday is coming up. Shout out oh, to the queen. Oh, Happy oh. birthday to the queen. On the 6th. On the 6th to yes. come. That's why she's in all yellow, y'all. Yes. Yellow's her favorite color. Yes, it is. So, so it's funny you should mention that because I still have no idea where I'm going for my oh. birthday. Oh. And I decided because my viewers have been on this journey with me for so long. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to reveal on the TV takeover when I find out where the fuck I'm going. Yeah. Um, they hooked this, it up. This has been hard, y'all. They hooked this it up hard, and it a secret. she's taking my friend away from me on her birthday. This is the first time that Jody has ever been in the state of Florida and we haven't spent her birthday together. Yeah. I'm low-key sad, but... But I heard it's gonna be dope. She got me for six days. Yes. So I know it's gonna be dope because she yes. knows I have high standards. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Should I so say that loud? Sure. Oh. Okay. <laughs> no, but I'm super excited. So I'm gonna actually be taking them with me. So they're gonna learn when I learn where I'm gonna be. Nice. I know it's gonna be a trip as well. Yeah. And they're also I'm also gonna take them. I got permission from uh, the bay to take them with me on my trip to actually nice. tour wherever the fuck I be at. Nice. And I know that I need a passport, so it's gonna be it's gonna somewhere, be dope. Out of the okay, so, so not only do you keep it real with me, but y'all too always have the tea. Mm. Right. So mm. before we start, you know, my little. Sports. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. don't do me like that. You know, yeah. you know what? what? So let's start with the Dolphins because they didn't win today. Oh, <laughs> oh. Hey. oh. You know, the start off I'm super, super excited. excited. I have to hold my breath on that one, but they did win. Oh, well, congratulations to the Dolphins. That's dirty. I mean, dirty man. Okay. My mom and my sister, we we have a group text, and my mom is texting I can't even my imagine. sister about. I'm just like, you know what? I can't even I just, imagine. So whatever. It was real close to a sorry ass team, but the score was twenty one seventeen. Real um, close to a sorry ass. Yeah, that's that means y'all almost got whipped by a sorry ass team. That's, that's a damn that's shame. Why I'm holding my breath. Okay. Oh, <laughs> you know. Oh, oh, so, oh, oh. So yeah, so phone? next week, um, they play the Patriots. I'm just, I'm just stop holding my breath. <laughs> so you mean y'all losing next week? 
Probably. Oh, Can you get my phone? Thank you. Right. Thank you, Booski. Um, so, yeah, so that's that. And the heat won on Friday, which is a good thing. Nice. You know, I'm going to oh. the heat the whole year because the Wayne Wayne, this is last year. So. It, it, but he's a new daddy. We're talking about the last episode. He's a new daddy. Yeah, he got shit to do. He got shit to do. Yeah. Yeah. He got shit to do. So, yeah, so they won on Friday. They have the game actually going on now. Um, Don't tune in. Stay here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, good one, babe. I like that. <laughs> but um, on some real news for sports, I don't know if you guys heard about uh, Kareem Hunt. Which is the uh, Kansas City Chiefs running back, um, star running back, star anyway. running back, and this is his second second year playing football. Um, he was the, the rookie last year. He was like all around rookie, most running yards and everything. Okay. Um, he made a dumb. Can I tell you, dumb, dumb. Is dumb. this what we talk about that we have receipts on? Man, this should we show them first? Let's you want to talk about it first? Roll, okay. Clip. Roll the clip, roll DJ. The clip. Roll. The clip. Okay, so let's see. I think we got something going on here. It's live. Y'all just calm the fuck down. Okay. Let's see who's um joining us. What's It's probably gonna be delayed. Don't don't stress yourself. You can hit play, baby. And then expand it. Yeah, hit the expand so we can so get the full up, screen. Yes, it's gonna come on. All right, so we're waiting for it to come up. Okay, looks like something's going on here. And here we go. Baby. All right. Okay, so what's 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 going on? Talk me through this. So right there, the arrow, that is uh, Kareem Hunt. Okay. Which is the football player. Okay, so he's a football player. So he's at, what, a hotel or something? He's at a hotel room. Okay. Um, He got into an altercation with a 19-year-old little white girl. Oh, a little oh, Becky. What? A little Becky. I had to. Because, I mean, come on, why you going to do some shit? Why you want me to do that? Okay. You know? Um, I don't It's going it's moving really, really slow. Okay. So I see the altercation here. All in all, he, be, he y'all, he beat the door down. So okay. basically, you know what what happened? Um, that I believe that there was in the club. There wasn't a club here. They said there was in the club. Okay. The girl came back to the room. They had an altercation at the hotel room, and he shoved her, pushed her, and then kicked her. Whoa! Well, mind you, Damn. mind you, this happened back in February, so the tape was not leaked until Friday. So and who leaked the, who leaked the tape? TMZ and TMZ always got. So tape. on Friday, I mean on, on February, when they when they found out this happened, they listened to the tape. They just heard that he got into altercation with a little girl. Um, you know, shoved her, assaulted her. His team found mm-hmm. out, but they didn't have no proof, so they kept him on the team. Mm. He stayed. The, the season started up again. They're playing. Friday comes up, and there's a tape that's leaked with him actually. Uh, with proof, hitting the girl, kicking the girl, and it got into the NFL's hands, the NFL league, and they kicked him out of the league. Ooh. I mean, this man was making millions. He's about to make nothing for a dumb zip zero, dumb mistake. Zip zero, I mean, stingy with the so narrow. Might mistakes. light your wrist, but that about it. <laughs> might yeah. buy your shit, but that about it. <laughs> Fuck it. I might wipe you and buy your nice shit, yeah, but go. mom, he really got a ride nice dick. No, not know how to work his hip. And you're talking about Oh, <laughs> sorry, you had a so, moment. Right now, Kansas City is furious with TMZ because they're, they're just a take leak. Wait, pause. And, not, and exactly, why are you going to be furious? They're upset that with, the with TMZ team. for leaking a man assaulting a exactly. woman because it's their best We're player. Up. We're and not, up. Exactly. We're James trying to win. Y'all. So this man just lost <laughs> his whole career, and which he deserves it. He deserves it. Mm. He deserves it. I mean, you know, whatever. Wow, what it is. that is something. Down in hotels, like you ain't learned from the, all the other football players yeah. who got caught on video beating bitches. Down. Hello, yeah. domestic, domestic violence is like the main thing right now, like with, with NFL players. But yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was some tea. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. You lost, your job, boo. You lost a job, job, all that money. Just for you, Millions yeah, yeah, yeah. So what else? Um, what we else? What, yeah. what we got going so, on? 
Uh, I want to talk about Future real quick, y'all. You always be talking about him. You like him or something? Future always has some shit. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. You're right. So, it's so funny. I don't know if any of you guys who watch Wendy Williams' show. How are you doing? How are you doing? Um, on Wendy Williams' show, a couple of weeks back, she featured this segment in her Hot Topics where she had a nice little pointer and everything, trying to keep up with all his baby mamas. Because, you know... He's he has he's his fifth baby mother oh, is pregnant, no. Joey um Chavez. She's also Bow Wow's baby mama. Oh, these hoes. And you know Bow Wow also dated Sierra. Anyways, so what? That's, yeah. Um that's worse than the lesbian community in South Florida. Uh, <laughs> no tea, no shame. Oh, or Atlanta though. Or Atlanta too, yeah. But no. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so she, you know, had this whole little segment where they, they trying to keep up with all his baby moms, and she was just like, "I'm pretty sure he already got number six pregnant." Oh, that yes. was her prediction. And sure, sure it enough, happened. Yes. Sure Wendy, enough, wait, wait, Wendy Williams said this. Yes. Wendy Williams wow. made that prediction. Wow, let me sit that I think thing. he already got baby mom number six pregnant on the way. And sure enough, about a week later, a chick comes out says that she's pregnant from Future. Not only she's pregnant, um, but he threatened her life if she does not have an abortion. Okay. Oh, That's oh we doing that? We okay. doing that now? So get this. This nigga's skeeting in everybody. Well, clearly. I'm just about to say, clearly. like, what the hell? He's just skeeting in everybody. Has you get no a skeet. Love. You, you get, get a skeet. Everybody, everybody gets a skeet. skeet. Okay. So he's skeeting in everybody. Clearly has no standards. Clearly doesn't care about protection, birth control. This chick, I forget her name, she's been sleeping with him on and off for the last two years. Um, she said she went to the doctor, thought about having the abortion, but decided not to do it because the doctor said that because she's a little older, not old, you know, like 30. Bitch, keep it real. You want that check. Baby. Keep it real. You want keep that check. Thank you. Okay? I wouldn't have aborted the baby. So she said she's going to go ahead and have keep the baby. Keep her ass. And she it. took the rumor out because... Um, just in case the future does something to her or if her life ends uh, seriously, that's smart, right? Um, people will know go that for, he go allegedly, for um, you know, threaten her. Now, this let me tell y'all something. This thing ain't got no standards about who he has a baby. Not to say that there's anything wrong with these women when I say no standards. But I'm just saying you having kids with everybody at this point. But this nigga have the nerve. To post a IG video on the top five nail polishes. You said that. You lying to me. Just in case y'all wouldn't know. What? Just in case y'all wouldn't know. This nigga fucking has a baby from everybody. But got the nerve to talk about you gotta wear <clears throat> white, nude, red, wet, neon, wet, or green, yellow, wet. Wait, black wait, this is future. In that order. Girl, bitch. Wet people shiny. Pause. I mean, okay. Oh my God. Like, what, sir, sir, you don't care about who you have kids with, but you care about what polish no, no, she got on her feet. Wow. Get your shit together. So messy. Damn. The best thing she ever did. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, she did. Yeah. Yes, yeah. she did. Yes, yeah, she, yeah, she did. Yeah. She yeah. leveled up. Level up, level up, level up, level up. Hey, I ain't mad. I ain't mad. I am not mad. But I mean, like, this nigga got the motherfucking nerve. A little bit. That's a little fruity. That's a little fruity to me. Yeah, I can't. But anyway, y'all, he don't yeah. baby mama number six. six. And if you care to know, maybe you maybe you try to be baby mama number, number seven. seven. We're white nail polish. He'll white. He likes white. He yeah. likes white. He's, 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 he's going to be. He's going to be. Yeah. 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 Is that is crazy. What else we got? What else we got? Um. So let's talk about Meek and Drake, y'all. Oh. But this is good news. Oh, oh, news. oh, this oh. Okay. okay. So we know that Meek and Drake had beef that stemmed back to like 2015. Um, Meek was upset because Drake didn't tweet his album that was coming out at the, at the time. Sissy ass niggas, I cannot. Like, Yo, first of all, it ain't about that. It's like, well, it's about support. You know, get your numbers up. Everybody told my shit will go gold platinum. And everything helps. Every tweet helps. <laughs> <laughs> so he was mad and he tweeted his album. Well, okay. So he got his and feelings got his over feelings. a tweet. And he said, Oh, I know that I know why this nigga ain't tweeting my album because he don't write his raps because he got to go. Here we go. Here we go. So Here that's go. what kind of started the whole beef with them or whatever. And then we all know that Drake was like, Oh, so I don't write my own shit. 
hold on. I remember that Everybody one. was waiting for me to come back with some shit. Thought Master Flex was like, oh, I got, I got the exclusive. I got the exclusive Meek Mill joint. It's about to, and it was a like, dud because it Meek wasn't ready quite yet. Didn't release. And then Drake said, look, fuck y'all. I'm not even going to wait. Then he came back with back to back. Wow. Back to back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one. I do remember that one. Killed. Oh. Okay. You come back after that. You really yeah. come back yeah. after yeah. that. Yeah. And then, you know, eventually, um, Fault Master Flex got his hand on Meek's diss track. Um, which by that time, want to know. I mean, by that time, ain't nobody want to know shit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's too late. You're like, yeah, day laying a dollar, dollar short. Back. Yeah. But I do love too long. I yeah. Love he took too long. So anyway, Meek just came out with a new album called Championships. Fire. Um, fire. It's fire. Okay. And um, him and Drake made up. They actually... Um, when uh, Drake was on tour, Meek was on stage with him, and um, Drake is featured on his album on a song called "Going Bad." So you know, you know, people coming together. You know, Meek is out here trying to clean up his image and do right out here in the streets. You think that's what he's doing? See. Well, he is. You you you, is. you believe that in your soul? I do, because okay. he was just on. I think it was CNN. He was on some new best friend. If you like it, I love it. About reform and <laughs> justice. And- <laughs> I mean, I almost did it. I almost did it. I know he was fucking Nicki Minaj. He was going with her. But you know what's? But you know what's so creepy though? What is that? Drake is making friends with all, not with all the people, but with some key people that Nicki Minaj has had beef with, like. It's very strategic. It's very strategic. Um. Also, um. She's trying to Steph stay relevant. Stephon Don. This um singer slap pop say what is she so what y- y- y'all know oh, Stephon Don? Yes. Yeah. Oh, we got yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So damn lesbians also, in the house. She also um has a little uh scuffles with um Nicki Minaj and Drake got at her the other day um a few weeks ago trying to get her uh take her out on a date. So I was like, I don't know, what? What's up with Drake and you know cozying up with all Nicki Minaj's little What's some water behind that. Enemies. Right. I don't know. Who knows what's going on behind? Uh, is there some drama going on with um the label? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think know. I personally think that when you have so many powerhouses in one label, people's head gets big, mm-hmm. and then you have everybody that have their demands. And I I think it's inevitable that eventually somebody's going to feel like, well, technically my numbers say this. I mean, when you think even in corporate America, think yeah. about it. The people that are the top performers, they feel as though that they're entitled. So oh, why should it be he's different? He's just a good guy. He just wants Girl, to be friends. So Rihanna says he's just a good guy. Girl, just Rihanna good guy. still says that. She still believes yeah. that. Yeah, he's Y'all he's saw this special with um with uh with uh what's the football? I mean basketball player. Um, with the who Drake? Airline, Drake? LeBron. 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 Yeah, yeah Wendy. So LeBron James. I want you to know that the words that come out of Wendy. Is not the views of us here at TV Takeover. You're fine with us. We love your hairline. I mean, it costs like ten to twenty thousand X um Safari. How much it costs to bring it? Okay, I cannot. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Anyway, what's anyway, that's that's what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what um, we got. We also heard that Kodak Black. Right. Why are we even that little oh, ugly yeah, ass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is my son so happy Recently, about Kodak Black? You know, first of all, because of his music. He was, he oh. was at the Playhouse um strip club or club or whatever in Hollandale. Here? Here. Okay. He's from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. And um, they got I guess not some kind of altercation in the club. They put him in handcuffs. He was sitting on the uh in the street. You know, on the sidewalk to get arrested. Okay. God must have been with him because they let him or the Illuminati go. Right. Or the Illuminati. Because his ass is on probation. He should have been going to jail. Maybe Gucci helped him out. I don't know. Somebody. But for, Somebody. oh, he, he he probably just paid the cops off right right off route, like, right yeah, there. Like some little, little, some little dollars, some little bucks. So he should have been locked up. Maybe, like, maybe, maybe like or, 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 he ain't doing nothing. That's maybe the nigga ain't doing nothing. I like. I wish that you were as positive on outlooks when it comes to me. Yeah, no, I'm not sorry. Hey, you give everybody second chances. I'm just, you might. Not, I'm just saying we don't know. You it right. could be one or the other. You might. Maybe you didn't do it. Let's you be positive. Right. Maybe the nigga ain't done that. He just had the bad rap sheet, man. I don't I'm know. He saying. had the bad rap sheet, so I don't know. Yeah. Okay, well, I just know that he's ugly. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. my son yeah. plays his music a lot. Um, maybe he I'm so sorry because he's kind of jealousy. He's ugly. He's ugly. He looks like Did a gorilla. Him in the last video when he was doing his little, um, I'm not attracted to that. Gucci, 
No, I don't care. Okay. No. I mean, the face ain't there, but he, he was. Doing I mean, but the face is what I gotta look at all the time. Yeah, I forgot what you like. Anyway, all yeah. Right. So yeah, that's that's a, well, I do one little one last thing. I just okay. want to talk about how shallow and superficial some of y'all motherfuckers are. What? And how Payless got some influences the other day, y'all. Shallow ass motherfuckers. So I heard about that. Yeah. So Payless um uh pulled up, did a pop up shop <laughs> and had all these influencers <laughs> and all of y'all who listen to influencers who tell you where to shop, where to buy, where to spend yeah. your money. Dream the bird. Dream the bird, bitch. Okay. Payless had a pop up shop. I forget what they call the name. That's Payless. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then had all these. Hot tooting his ass bitches come out to the store. You see them picking up the payless shoes. I'm like, oh my gosh, the quality. Oh my gosh. Fur one is fur one. Oh my gosh. Just talking shit. Just talking shit. Like two, three hundred dollars for payless shoes that cost nineteen ninety nine, y'all. All because of the brand. All right. Because of the name. They're making. They're making a point. And they were exactly. They yeah. made a point. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Tasha said that Kodak Black looked like a walking yeast <laughs> infection. <laughs> But yeah, yeah so they got yeah. God. That's they like got the, got that's the epitome of hashtag petty. Hashtag petty. Shout out to Payless for getting the award for Shout petty out. of the year. Shout that was Payless. some good shit. It just shit. goes to show yeah. that it's not about the name. Yeah. Well, no. Well, it does show you that brands do carry, um, you know, big to doing and getting people to buy. But it's not always about the brand. It's at, at the end of the day, it comes down to the quality. That same little shoe that you call thought cost three, four hundred dollars. Nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, Payless. Y'all don't go out there trying to be broke and yeah. spending all this money. Yeah, trying to look good for everybody else. Yep. They can't fucking pay your mortgage. Probably yep. can't buy a house. Yeah, can't pay your rent. Yeah, lights turn off. You better preach. To shop for people, bitch. You could have been. You better preach. You better preach. So you know what? Together. On that note, I want to end with this because it's actually somebody told me this, and it goes right into that point. People mm -hmm. buy things that they don't need. Yep. With money that they don't have, right? To impress motherfuckers that they don't even like. Hello. Stop it. Stop. I like that one, Bestie. Yes. I like yes. that one. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Is that all the tea? That's all the tea we got. As you guys know, episode nine, we're dealing with mental health. I gotta kind of get in my little serious mode. Yeah. As you guys know, episode nine, we're dealing with mental health. I gotta kind of get in my little serious mode because you know we're talking about some serious shit. Um, one of the things that I was uh, really encouraged by is the episode that Charlemagne the God had on VH1, where it was the first ever actual live counseling. I took some notes on it because. I actually realized that it was a counseling session for myself. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things he talked about is anxiety. Yeah. You and I actually think have that, that parental yeah. anxiety. Mm -hmm. We almost think that it's okay for us to feel the way that we feel because we think that it's just being a parent, not right. realizing that it actually is something that we may need to be seen yep. um, or to speak to somebody professional to help us better manage um, some of the uh, behaviors or the, the things that we deal with when we think about our children. Right. He said, competent individuals counsel us. Yeah. So I'm really excited about this episode. We have some professionals um, that are going to not only be talking about things, but also giving advice to some of our viewers. And I have somebody extremely special. I cannot I wait to wait. tell everyone. So this person was actually on the show before. Yes. And they're going to be coming back to actually talk to us about the uh, mental health in the prison system. Real live. All, yes, both both not only the uh the person mm -hmm. but also his boot thing as well. Wow. And she fine, child. She's still fine. Her. You saw her? Oh, She's still she fine. Funny. She is still fine. <laughs> she ain't she ain't dropped the beat. Yeah. So I'm really excited. So before you guys leave, I just wanted to kind of catch people up because some people may not even know about mental health. So 
Mental illness, guys, is a condition that affects a person's thinking, feeling, or mood. Uh, such conditions may affect someone's ability to relate to others and function each day. Each person will have different experiences, even people with the same diagnosis. So you and I can both have an anxiety, but absolutely completely different experiences. Yep. Recovery, including meaningful roles in social life, school, and work is possible, especially when you start treatment early and play a strong role in your own recovery process. A mental health condition isn't the result of one event, multiple linking causes, genetics, environment, and lifestyle influence, whether someone develops a mental health condition. A stressful job, bitch, we all know about that. Um, or home life makes some people more susceptible. I have a friend here that be beating grown ass people daughters every day. I mean, she may have a mental issue. Um, no shade, but I love you, boo. Um, um, but as, as traumatic life events, I've been a victim of a crime as well. Biochemical processes and circuits and basic brain structure may also play a role as well. Check out some of these statistics, okay? One in five adults experiences a mental... Let me go back. One in five... Isn't that the same status, uh, statistic for herpes, herpes as well? One in five adults experience a mental health condition every single year, okay? One in 17 lives with a serious mental illness such as schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. In addition to a person directly experiencing a mental illness, family, friends, and communities are also affected. Half of mental health conditions actually, guys, begin as early as the age of 14. And 75% of mental health conditions develop by the age of 24. The normal personality and behavior changes of adolescents may sometimes mimic or mask symptoms of a mental health condition. That's big. That's, yeah. that's major. Early engagement and support are crucial to improving outcomes and increasing the promise of recovery. Guys, in the words of Charlemagne the God, in order for you to expect to be great, in order for you to be great, you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. So we have plans today on seriously doing some unpacking. Yeah. We're about to let the unpacking begin. Unpacking Don't go too far. Yes, we. I, I'm gonna talk about you a little bit. I'm sorry. I love you though, it's fine. but it's for both of us. Can we do the it's same fine. shit? It's yeah, it's me, yeah. Break it down. So don't go too far. Okay. Definitely, you know, tag anybody that you know. Probably everybody needs this. Yeah. Even the ones that think that they don't need it, need it. Shit, I wish I think I'm bipolar. I need. I may need some. She is bipolar. Wet, pause. Pause for the cause. PTSD. For the pause. For the cause. Like yeah, she said. She said. She's, 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 I said I might be bipolar, and she co-signed. You must supposed to co-sign, babe. PTSD, <laughs> right. right. So don't go too far. We have some amazing guests. I'm gonna be um, bringing on this on the set to kind of talk about it. We're gonna be talking about you know what are some of the symptoms, what are some help for, as well as some resources. Girl, we have a pre-law degree gra grad in here. We have uh, masters um, in social work, um, bachelors in psychology, and we have I'm not gonna say who because I really wanted it to be a surprise, but. We have some really, really relevant people that are going to be able to, I think, bust this wide open for a lot of That's people. So I'm, cool. I'm, I'm excited. Thank you guys for the tea. You guys are great. Thank you. Don't go too far. I'll see you guys later. All right. You look good. <laughs> I love her. All right, guys. So we're going to definitely um, change the pace a little bit. And I want all of you guys to... Tune in, um, make sure that you share this page. Let anybody that you know could quite possibly benefit from this, which is every fucking body. Um, let them know what we're about to talk about. We are about to talk about mental health issues, primarily in the African-American community. We're not only gonna be talking about mental issues here, um, outside of civilization, but also what the fuck is going on in the prison system that is ultimately impacting us out here as well. So guys, without further ado, I would like for you guys to welcome my guest for our second segment. Let's give it up for my guest. <laughs> Woo! Come on. Yes, everybody, everybody, everybody. So right here, yeah. Miss Fiona. Hello, darling. Oh, you look the oh, Thank you. Miss Angela, you in the middle. Yeah. I have you, Miss tall, tall Legs right here. Miss Beautiful, look at this beautiful queen we have. And this sexy, sexual chocolate right here in the back. Come on. Yes, welcome. Thank you, guys. What's going on? So before I even start, I need to reveal to you guys why, well, one of the reasons I have such 
a humongous smile on my face right now. I almost want to cry, fam. I do. So Stacy Lewis was actually on episode four. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Stacey Lewis was actually on episode four. It was called Locked Up. And Stacey Lewis actually, guys, just came up. How, how many months has it been now? Seven months you've been out? Nine months. Stacey, guys, just did 21 years in prison. Okay? And he shared his story with us on episode four, which to date is our biggest grossing show on the TV Takeover Network. Not only did he speak with us, but his queen as well was with us, um, talking with us. We call her Taz for her fine self. Um, you know, so I'm gonna be honest with you, Stacy. Okay, I know, I know. I so Stacy, um, when Stacy and I first started to communicate, and I realized that I wanted to share your story, and you told me, I mean, murder was one of the charges, guys, just so you have an idea. Like, this nigga ain't no joke, okay? Um, so when I first heard about your story, I was like, um, we may have to Skype this one in. I'm not sure <laughs> if, I'm, I'm gonna be real with you, Stacey. I was a little nervous. Even my best friend was like, my best friend was like, she said, look, you either go Skype him in or you gonna Skype me in, but I don't <laughs> For real. Right. You know, we, I was a little nervous, but you know, at this point that, you know, you are family and, you know, we absolutely love you. And I, I wanted to do something special for you. And I know that you were not expecting it. Um, we here at the TV Takeover appreciate you so much. And I know that it is an absolute struggle for you right now coming out. I mean, after being uh, serving, first of all, in prison for 21 years, and even before that, the only way that you knew of any type of revenue is the streets right and i'm not going to tell you guys a story you got to tune into episode four and we're actually working on this documentary by the way as well so let's clap it up for that that's coming up for 2019 um but I, I wanted to do something for you just to show you our appreciation and marcel is actually going to be putting um, up your cash app information as well on behalf of myself on behalf of my bnb corner i want to go ahead and give you a donation just to show you how much we love it we're going to give you a hundred dollars today and we're going to cash up it to you. Um, and we're actually going to put your cash up information because, Stacey, you got fans. There are people out there that believe in you. There are people out there that uh, hear, uh, hear your, have heard your story. You've inspired them. And we're going to put Stacey Lewis's guys. If you guys uh, watch episode four, if you didn't watch episode four but are just even moved by this moment and you want to dedicate um, or make this man's first Christmas as a free man, right? Uh, absolutely special. His cash up information is up there, guys. Donate and give. I'm going to tell you, and I'm, I say this on my personal Facebook page all the time, giving for me is the reason that I am here today. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about that importance of giving. So I want to just thank you. And we love you. You are family. We appreciate you. Appreciate yeah. So you're here today because you're going to be talking to us a little bit about the uh, mental health and to get to you a little bit, we're going to introduce everyone around, but I just had to, I, you know, you, you, I yeah, yeah. We just had to make sure, you know, I just, I can't believe I cried. Y'all such a bitch. It's my period. Dude. Check the calendar. <laughs> my period must be coming because I don't normally cry. So let's, <laughs> I'm a little bitch. I'm a little bitch. I love Stacey. That's my brother. Like he's become family. Okay. So I want to now introduce you guys to this amazing panel. First of all, you guys are absolutely beautiful. I mean, do we not see the amazingness that we have? Okay. So here we have on my left. So we have Miss Fiona Johnson. Fiona is a communication success strategist. She is a CEO and founder of Speak Hope International and is a best-selling author in Empower Your Life. Fiona is, a, is passionate about empowering leaders, entrepreneurs, and business professionals with her step-by-step -step program so that they can release ineffective patterns and habits um, and quickly and easily achieve greater success in every area of their lives. Fiona holds a pre-law degree, oh. clap it up, yeah. okay, and a bachelor's in psychology. She's also a certified success coach and DISC certified communications trainer. Fiona ignites the atmosphere with her innovative methods, empowering presence, and her commitment to helping others achieve profound results. That was a mouthful. Oh, that 
was a mouthful. So thank you. Yes, absolutely. So I'm going to introduce everybody and then we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, what we have going on. And, um, I, you know, I appreciate you because you said, Jody, you know, I, I, I really take to heart what you're doing. I appreciate what you're doing. So I have notes and I want to make sure that I'm ready. So I, I see you and I'm ready for it. This queen here in the mid, in the middle. So we have, and, oh, I just also want to mention too, that, uh, Fiona actually is, um, her, her her background is Caribbean, and the reason that I say that is because it's important when we talk about culturally Culture. competence and and being able to help people. So she is from Jamaica herself, yeah. yeah. And big up in I amigo, This is Angela. Angela, I absolutely love Angela. Angela is actually she has her master's in social work. She's actually been in the industry since two thousand and six. She is retired twenty years from the military. Woo woo. Thank you for your service, Miss Angela. She works with kids in foster care. She works with family uh, reunification. And she also has worked at a mental health facility um, for over, I think, four or five years, providing. In That's, she did. Yeah. That's how we connected. That's how we connected. <laughs> providing inpatient and outpatient services. And she currently works as a, uh, at the hospital as a social worker. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> One, what I really love about Angela is. Her personality, we're actually a little bit alike. She is just a little bit. I'm not, wait, I'm, is, that, is that offensive? Is that a bad thing? So Angela has a very big personality. She is who she is authentically. She loves herself. Um, she is raw, real, and all the way live. And I think that's a great thing in the industry because there's going to be be someone for example or maybe a younger person that is very unique that walks into an office such as you and are going to feel comfortable speaking with you because they can relate so i appreciate your authenticity and i love you Yay! oh on the end here we have this queen now you have I called about seven times. I used to smoke a lot of weed back in the day. <laughs> what kind of do? Um, and I was, I forgot a little bit as a, a, a dosh. I got it. Clap it up for me, y'all. So a dosh, she is the creator of the Soul for Thoughts. Mind you guys, all the information for these young ladies, how you can get in touch with them um, is going to be uh, streamed up in front of you. Um, because specifically here um, with a dosh, she's a creator of the Soul for Thoughts collection by La Time Wit. Her uh, Soulful Thoughts collection includes reusable journal journals that were partly uh, came about by a 12 year old girl who actually had committed suicide right. on social media. Um, it devastated her so much that this young lady spent two hours and nobody could help her. And she herself, you admitted to me that you have been through many rough times, that's both of us, and found that writing daily the things that you are grateful for and intend to do helps shift the mindset. The Soulful Thoughts Collection mission is to heal the world one page at a time through gratitude and intentional writing. And I visited your website. It's going to be shown right there. Beautiful stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. And y'all know my booze in the back. Y'all know my booze in the back. All right. So I just want to kind of talk to you a little bit. So talk to me a little bit about what you do um, and specifically what mental health and just, you know, some of the things you just kind of wanted to share before we jump into our, our next panel section. It was funny because when you when, when we first connected, mm -hmm. um, never really thought about it too much, except you've had people around you all the time who are experiencing difficulties with depression or, you know, they're socially awkward sometimes. Yes. And you're wondering what's the root cause behind that? Because sometimes you'll hear people say, well, I'm depressed, but there's something that's creating the depression, mm -hmm. right? And you mentioned it's not um, a medication that you would say one size fit all. Right. Because we're also different. Yes. We're wired differently. Genetically, we're different. Biologically, we're different. We grew up in different environments. Culturally, from a Jamaican perspective, yes. you know how we are in Jamaican. A lot of mercy. Yes. <laughs> when, you, when you get in scolding, it's really some real beat. You know, no, man. And when you think about it, I look at it as like it's corporal punishment because it feels like that. Exactly. Yeah. And if for a child, you're wondering what is it that you could have done so badly to deserve that mm -hmm. kind of beating. But um, when, when I think about it from a biblical perspective, because we grew up um, very Christian so much in the, in, in the word. And I'm a Christian. I'm a firm believer in who God is. Mm. But there is that proverb that says uh, spirit of rot and spoil the child. 
And so a lot of Jamaican parents grew up with that kind of perspective. Yeah. Whereas, okay, I'm going to knock the crap out of you. I'm going to yeah. do this. And Y'all go learn today. And, and so, yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> so most kids grew up with that thing, feeling as though they are in the wrong. Right. It's never been communicated to them, really, what is it that they did wrong. Right. It was almost beat into you what you did wrong. Right. And so you don't fully understand it. Yep. And so you grow up thinking, okay, if somebody does something to me, I'm going to beat them. Mm. And why do you think the prison system is what it is? Mm. Because there are lots of unresolved issues. Right. And so for me, mental health is a serious condition. And it's something that I don't believe we should just um, broad brush and paint everyone with the same brush, but to look at it for what it is. Right. And I'm glad that we have an opportunity on this panel to discuss it. Yeah, we are. It's researching it has opened my eyes to the reality of what's really going awesome. on. Awesome. Thank so you. Yeah. Me. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, and she's smart, y'all. Got me a small one today. No, um, no, I appreciate you sharing that. And I think it's so important that you mentioned and you were very um, transparent in speaking about, you know, the discipline and in, especially in our culture, yeah. you know, children are to be seen, not heard. Exactly. And, you know, there's a lot of these things that take place that make it very, very difficult for children to be able to express themselves because they were always told you don't do that. Exactly. Um, so then for you to train children all their life to be this way. And then all of a sudden when they're an adult and they have real shit going on, mm -hmm. expect them to not be able to, to speak yeah. on it. You touched on something and I wanted to kind of touch on a little bit and we're going to jump to um bit in regards to um mental health in the prison system stacy i did some research after you sent me that tweet and mm -hmm. i was not aware of what was going on so i'm going to read some of the facts that I, I i found and then i want you to share with us your experiences what's really going on um in the prison system and let me know if some of this is 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 uh is uh accurate okay so serious mental illness has become so prevalent in the U.S. correction system that jails and prisons are now commonly called the new asylum. That's crazy. Um, in, a, in point of fact, the Los Angeles County Jail, Chicago's Cook County Jail or New York Rikers Island Jail each hold more mentally ill inmates than any remaining psychiatric hospital in the United States. Overall, approximately 20% of inmates in jails and 15% of inmates in in-state prisons are now estimated to have a serious mental illness. Based on the total inmate population, this means approximately 383,000 individuals with severe psychiatric disease were behind bars in the United States in 2014, or nearly 10 times the number of patients remaining in the nation's state hospitals. Once in jail, many individuals don't receive the treatment they need and end up getting worse, not better. Um, I actually read a quote from one of the prisoners where he said, a lot of prisoners have told me that when they finally got the courage to ask the guards to see a mental health professional, there wasn't any confidential space to do so. And that was a big thing as well. He says, instead, someone will come over to your cell and talk to you through the cell door. It's loud. Everyone can hear you. And why would you tell someone that you are hearing voices or yourself? It can be completely embarrassing, especially in prison, where there is an expectation to be tough. It may be the reason some inmates are choosing to stay silent and only get noticed once their condition worsens and they act out. In a new study published in April, researchers uh, combed through records of more than 8,500 Iowa state prison inmates and found that, a, this is crazy guys, a whopping 99% of mental health diagnoses were first made during incarceration, some as late as 29 months into a prison sentence. That means that in some situations, guards, officers, physicians, inmates themselves were unaware that they had a condition like PTSD or personality disorder for more than two years. Stacy, spill the tea, what's going on? Oh, this, this, this was really going on. They sent in all these people to prison that they really got programs set up that's really supposed to be helping these guys out. And what they're doing is these state attorneys want these convictions. And instead of trying to just send you to a mental hospital, and, and what they do is they send you two state doctors and your lawyer present one doctor for yourself. So with the two state doctors, state attorney doctors, always going to try to say you're playing malingering. That means you're playing crazy. Uh -huh. Trying to defeat your charges by trying to go with the NGI, not guilty by insanity. Mm. Trying to go to a mental hospital like Chattahoochee, Gainesville, South Florida, Valley Retreat Center. So they find it. So the state attorney doctors got in their mind that you're really trying to wiggle a lot. Yeah. 
but they had no evidence that you even committed these crimes. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So wow. they, ain't, they ain't making a trial or nothing. The only why you see these doctors because your, your lawyer is presenting to the judge that I can't help my client because he don't understand his charges. Ah, he don't understand who you is. Ah, the state attorney is. He don't know who I am. He don't understand what a jury is. When I tell him that we want to go to jury trial and take a plea ball, and he don't understand none of that. So the judge is saying, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put an assessment in, and we're going to get doctors to review them. So it's going to all be like three. So it got to be two out of three got to vote for you to say that he had a mental issue problem. What? So if it's two state attorney doctors coming to see you, <sighs> And they gonna say they've been in like it's like how you say her yeah. her whole background she got a good portfolio right so when, when them doctors get up there they're gonna say well for in the hearing in, in the um the hearing they have and what they're gonna say is what is your background how long you've been in the system dealing with this and these doctors gonna be saying i've been around 30 years right so automatic you're gonna believe them because right. they got a portfolio that you got to go for right so this man might be mentally held for real, but y'all want this conviction so bad. Right. So you can be a judge one day or you want to run for Congress. It's all politics. Right. So they send the people to prison that really will be getting mental health. And when they get you up the road in prison, what they do is they dope you up. They try to slow you down. So a lot of dudes that you see normal. Right. Then when they come home, they ain't normal. No, there's a guy you see talking in front of McDonald's that they sell, gas stations. And you wonder like how they got like that. Oh wow. These the guys they letting go, they never gave help to. Oh. The doctors only got so many in prison. You got populations, you know, only been in Florida, so and I've been like the longest right. thing without seeing you. Right. You right. got probably one doctor that's trying to see a 1300 population, a 1500 population, oh, which is impossible. So yeah. you try to schedule these hours and squeeze in about three people in an hour. And you really don't care about the people because know why they coming to you with blues on so in your mind they guilty they have so preconceived notions already right. right so they concerned for you they not like them see how her portfolio is she want to help right they just end up get collecting the check right and because when you go home another person gonna take your spot yeah. and guess what they always gonna have a job mm -hmm. right so you can tell the correction all some have a problem like we gotta go it's called psych emergency right and that's the only confidential that you have when you go to the side i would like to request a psychic they will cuff you up okay take to the doctor okay the doctor had time to say take him back to the dorm i don't see nothing wrong with him if you don't want to kill yourself ah he didn't kill himself he had a try send him back to the dormitory he got any marks on his arm or wow. he's calling razor blades anything if he ain't doing that send him back to the dorm so they most do be hanging themselves so around christmas time or holidays because they told these people they got problems. Right. Everybody can't do prison time. Right. You understand what I'm saying? It could be no, it could be a doctor, a lawyer in there, because they all go to prison. Right. So this dude come in and say, it's Thanksgiving time. It's, it's, it's really bothering me right now. Right. All year long, it don't bother me, but this certain time of the year, it bothered me. Right. So I need to see a doctor. Right. They're going there, put you in the site cell, strip you. They come, like you say, come to the door. Right. Talking loud with a clipboard. Right. Mr. Lewis, how you feeling today? I'm doing well. Uh, so you hear voices or anything? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all right, man. Because you don't want uh, anyone to yeah. else. Yeah, Send which is what the guys. Found, he all right. Wow. And that's how it go. And it's really sad because majority of these dudes that's, that's really getting these charges is really bogus charges on them. Because really, like I just said, he could be a dude in front of McDonald's just talking to himself and somebody called the police because he's loitering and prowling. He's just in other people's eyes. Right. He's just doing normal stuff. I'd like begging for money. Right. So now when the police come, they going to take him to the ground, put a couple of knees into him, beat him up, because he don't understand why he didn't handcuff. And what they do is the police give bogus charges, assault on the officer, batter on the officer. So when they get in jail, they really don't know why they locked up. Wow. They go to the attorney, I don't know what happened. I was in front of McDonald's. Police pulled up and told me to get on the ground or something. And they didn't comply. So now when they wrestle you to the ground and beat you down, they give you a charge. They cover it up just in case you got a lawyer because they don't really know who you is. Right, right. So these guys in prison copping out the charges that they really they didn't really commit. They really need mental health, but these police supposed to be trained out here, like correctional supposed to be trained. Right, right. That's what they claim. They put all this money in the mental health help out here, but they ain't complying with it. Look, I, I, I was watching the Georgia they shot the man in Miami that got on the ground. I was a mental health patient. He was on the ground. I saw no that. No guns, no nothing. Yeah. Because they don't know how to deal with them, but they claim they give me police classes. Right. Why they not using these classes? Right. They keep coming with aggression. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Because these mental health people can't think for themselves. They right. They're not the kids. Right. You right. You know what I'm saying? They, right. their mental capacity can't go past 
14 and 13, wherever they elect, they, they relapse that. Right. That's the year they stuck in. Right. That's why you see a lot of 50 years old still at like they 12. Right. And you, we call them retarded, uh, this and that bad name because you right. don't know what they went through in their life. Right. For them to come and what they became. Right. Because me, I was in the psychology at 12 years old. And you know why? Yes. My mama got killed in front of me. Grandma died in front of yes, me. Yes, yes. My brother killed himself. Yes. In the house. You guys so, got to tune in episode so, four, guys. His story is amazing. So I was seeing the doctor. That don't mean I was crazy. Right. It just felt like I was weaving off from who I used to be right. as they seen me growing up. Right. So they got me help. Right. You feel what I'm saying? But everybody don't have money for no psychologists. Right. We're going to talk about that too. Saying? Yeah. Everybody don't have money for no psychologists. Like you said, it's probably neighborhoods right. where you got to have this kind of insurance. Right. Uh, if you're on welfare, you're going to go to these kind of doctors. And guess what? If you go to them, they really don't care. No. I went to one in Atlanta. Yeah. Decatur. What did they, they say? They haven't seen that in because you know, I was diagnosed with PTSD in 2000. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. Behind all my charges. Okay. I so didn't know that. When I came PTSD in 2000, I was South Florida Rabbit Treatment Center. Okay. They waved me over. I was at Competent Stand Trial. So they summoned the children in the family. They get helped by real doctors like Chattahoochee, Gainesville, and South Florida Rabbit on 22nd and 7th Ave. back then. Right. So when I went, talked to doctors, they tried to teach me who the judge is, who the state attorney is, who the attorney is. And if you don't know who everyone is, you cannot go back to court. They still send me back to court without me even knowing all this. And mm, then we go mm, face trial mm. the next year. And mm. they gave me 32 years for my first case. Oh, wow. You feel what I'm saying? Then took me to trial two years later, gave me 23 more years running consecutive. Oh, no. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And God good, y'all. He's here today. He's here today. Um, so one of the things that I know that I had, I'm doing some research on is um solitary confinement and what it does to the mental state of people. What are some of the things, what are some of the things that you personally witnessed, Stacey, in the in prison that people either did or transitioning um in in their in their mental state? Something that just stands out to you, situations that you personally saw. To me, solitary confinement is the worst thing you could put in there. It ain't even solitary confinement. They have this junk called CM. It's called closed management. They got these dudes incarcerated. That's already incarcerated for not an extra crime. It's called D a DR. If you get the wrong kind of DR, like an aggressive DR, if you stab somebody, bust somebody in the head with a sock in the lock, whatever it is. Right. They got the DRs that go past solitary confinement. And you could go up to six months to five years behind the door. It's called closed management. See, don't tell all y'all that out here. It's called CM. They call it closed management. These dudes and some dudes, if you keep getting the DRs, you will never come off because they psychologically gone. They right? Don't to, how, they don't even want to go back to population. How can you? How can you? They Your love mental state. In room all day doing nothing. Talking to dudes through a vent because you talk to this vent. I can talk to you upstairs. Right. And these dudes doing months to years. You no know, confinement. You do like thirty days, sixty days, ninety days. Right. Back on the pounds. Right. These guys again took off the pounds and something. To be and they all like in redneck towns in the panhandle. And they killing dudes up there. They throwing dudes downstairs in handcuffs. You feel what I'm saying? Because you in a position where you like the bad guy. Or right. The prison system so no one's going to believe you, right. even if you were to speak out and yeah, say this will happen. Go ask for, I'm on a psych emergency. Right. They're going to need you though because you feel like, okay, what's the proof you really did? Ask right. For a psych emergency. Right. Talk to the next year. So really, they got these dudes doing six months behind the door five years behind the door and and then they release them into with into right. society with no help with no help and then we have to deal with it yeah. you know oh, he just snapped or he's right want to go back right because right he can't go back he can't get right. a job nobody don't understand him nobody right. care no more out here. right in prison they don't care but they care a little bit more than that because people got their own lives to live out here right they'll see you roll right by you like why this dude out here with a sign somebody on you right you better go get a job you better go do it but you don't know what the situation is wow you feel what i'm saying at least they ain't robbing and stealing and all that but what's gonna happen if he can't collect no money guess what he gonna do son come yeah just to go back because he know the norm is where he knew and guess what he won't mind being like a closed management he won't mind going back to prison and it's a lot of dudes in there Got G letters and H letters. What that means is a zero is your first letter. Okay. These dudes that got A's and B's and C's, I mean, you know, the A is your second time, and these dudes got G's and H's and I's and J's. Wow. And all that because it's wow. all they know. Because they don't even know they got a mental issue. Because you don't understand it. if you love being incarcerated, you got to be mentally something wrong with your yeah. capacity up there. Yeah. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? You yeah. think it's all right. You're 50 years old now. You've been going to prison since 18 years. That's 17. all you know. 
It's all you That's know. all you know. You, you know come out. You know all the awards. Right. Who graduated, who promoted it. Right. You've seen all of it. That's That's your, it becomes your family. That's as right. crazy as it sounds. Taz, let me ask you something. Um, so you know, you guys had a history before he was locked up and he went away for 21 years and he came back. What are some changes that you saw with Stacy that you knew that there was definitely something that was different? Um, well, I, I really feel like he's more in tune in what's happening. Um, like I said on the show before, mm -hmm. he um relates to um society to people as us out here because of where he's been the whole time. Right. So he calls we're us not, as us out here. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're not well, we don't know what's going on. We don't understand. You know, and that's because he's seen so much. Like I feel safest with him because he's aware of who's out out here and mm -hmm. what's out here because he's lived with these people his whole life. Wow. So I have seen I've seen him change for like the better, right? So to say, okay. Um, because he is more aware of what's going on, right? Right, right. right. Yeah. And shout out to you. You know, it, it definitely takes having a strong queen um, in your corner, someone that supports you, loves you unconditionally, um, and is patient. So definitely, kudos to you. Ooh, did y'all get all that tea? What I, I upgrade your party, please. I need a drink after that one. Um, Stacey, thank you so much for, for sharing that. I'm sure we're going to be talking a little bit um, more about that. So one of the things I wanted to kind of do with you guys is um, I did some research on some of the, the top 10 um, uh, disorders. And I wanted to kind of talk about that a little bit and discuss what are some of the symptoms, what are some of the causes, and also what are some of the treatments. Um, but before I go into that, I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit because you may mention about how you got into what it is that you do. Um, and talk a little bit about your website and what it is that you offer and why it's helpful and just kind of go from there. All right. Well, um, I'm originally from Uganda, East Africa. Oh, so we got <laughs> the mama lad in the building. <laughs> yeah, sip on that. <laughs> Wakanda. But my, um, what I used to say is that the biology of hair, life has been the greatest lesson to me. Yeah. And I say that because I've been, my journey has been such a blessed journey. I, 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 I'm a December diva like yourself. I yeah. turned 40 this year. So you wait, I'm, pause. 40 club. 40 where? Yes. Clap it up for that. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. Right. I'm not supposed to be my wow. birth. I'm not supposed to be my Oh, wow. So, um, short, long story. I was born, my name, my name's a doge, which in my country, they, in my mom's uh, language, which is a trolley, they simplify everything. So I was born breached. Not only was I born breached in 78, and my mom was in labor for four days, my umbilical cord was wrapped around my neck three times. Oh, they were trying to shut so you down. I was already pronounced dead at birth. And then my nurse said, no, you are, you are destined to be here. Right. So fast forward, I've lived through four wars. I had a stroke at 26. I. I mean, and but in the midst of everything that I've gone through, I've been blessed or know that what I'm going through, I've God has prepared me to be able to be a blessing Amen. to somebody else. Amen. Now, um, at the time when I had my stroke, I was in Toronto. I was working IBM, successful job. I was modeling full time. I was just keeping busy, not to feel. Mm. I was internalizing. Can you say that again, please? You were. I was keeping busy, not to feel. So a lot of people do that. Is my drug. Yes. Wow. Working wow. All the time was my drug. So um, I was working four jobs at the same time, two full time, two part time. And God said, I need you to sit down somewhere. And that's what I, so I call my stroke the stroke of life. And I'm going to claim the stroke. So wow. people are like, don't say my, it's my stroke because it went through, it's the stroke of life. And during that time, I came here for a second opinion because they wanted to diagnose me with uh, multiple sclerosis because they couldn't figure out what caused the stroke. Right. And I moved to South Florida. Oh, no, I came to South Florida to get a second opinion, and I sat on the beach for 10 days. And in that 10 days of prayer and meditation, I got the message to move here, not knowing anybody. not So I came here blindly 10 years ago. And uh, during that time, 
I, and I can't even compare to Jared, but he's, he mentioned holidays. Holidays are really tough. Right. Because I can't see my family because I can't travel. Please don't come to me. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be transferred. But there's a lot of obstacles that I've had to face here. Right. Because I'm here by myself. I don't wow. have any blood family. I've, I've, I've grown family as I've been here. Right. Not being able to work because I'm not American. Not not um not working, so I don't have the money to come and get the the help that I needed to deal with all the stuff that I'm going, all this new stuff that's happening. Right. I'm still modeling. I'm still expected to smile and look pretty. Right. I'm still expected to to represent my family in a certain way, but I'm crying and hurting and 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 dying inside. And I gotta, you know, you gotta be like, yeah, you gotta keep it cute. You gotta keep it cute. So, or um, that's the expectation at least. Exactly. Right. So, um, I knew I needed to do something and I knew that this part of the journey of the journey that I'm in is for me to reach out to those young kids because not only am I a model, I'm a dark skin model, mm. dark skin model. When, right. When we were still tar babies and whatever else they wanted yeah. to call us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I knew I was beautiful. Because my dad told me I was beautiful, mm. my mom told me my mom is gorgeous, and I'm an exact copy of her. So I knew God put me to modeling so I can teach these kids. Right. I can say, hey, you guys think I'm cute? I didn't feel I was cute. I used to eat lunch in the bathroom. Oh. You're beautiful. Right. So He put me through through that to to mentor them. And then now we have the social media where now we're comparing. I don't think I'm doing enough because this person is going to this place and they have this job. And, right. And all of that. And hashtag living their best life. Living and I'm not. Life. Yeah. I, I can get out of bed some days because I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Cry. yeah. Like my life is not together. Right. So as I was mentioning, the, the young lady. When I said enough was enough was when I saw the young lady two years ago. So I have a head wrap company that I started. I do head wraps. Beautiful right. head wraps, by the way. Her website is, should be uh, coming up right now. You guys can check it out. And um, I met three. Uh, I met three different people as I was going through my journey that said I needed to write, but I couldn't put my mind to save my life mm. because as soon as you know you want to pray, you want to meditate, then you have to think, okay, tomorrow I got to do this. Eat yeah, this, distracted. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I wonder what he's doing. Oh my goodness, what am I going to eat? Right. And you just get distracted. Right. So they're like, start with three to five things daily that you're just grateful for. Okay. Just start with the simple things. Okay. So I started journaling three to five things and I saw the shift in my life. Mm. And it was a ma it was a major shift. Yeah. It was three to five things. That's all it took. So then the young lady, two hours on Facebook. I don't know her personally. I right. just cried for a month straight. I'm like, we gotta touch these youth. Yeah. They're our future. Yeah. So I took my head wraps and I started cutting them up and making removable book covers and giving them to young girls when I mentored out, when I went to speak at the schools and the churches and said, look, I'm challenging you. I'm holding you accountable to write three to, no, not even three to five, five to 10 things that you are grateful for, for daily. As a matter of fact, no, write five to 10 things that you're grateful for at night so you can go to bed with a grateful heart. heart. Yep. Write five to 10 things that you, you intend to do during the day. So such as I struggle with drinking water. Mm -hmm. um, so it may be make somebody smile, drink water. Um, I intentionally put the words down on paper mm -hmm. so that I know that I have to be accountable to yes. myself to do it. And I just get calls and texts all the time saying, thank you so much. It's the simplest thing, but it helped. It's helping me shift my life. So I'm, I'm trying to heal someone's world one page at a time. And if it's only one person, I'm grateful for that. Wow, that's God beautiful. That much. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. That's a beautiful story. Um, so I know when you were talking about journaling, um, Angela, you and I kind of talked about that. And you actually started off something. You want to talk a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah. So I guess we all have different stories. Um, I mean, I'm from the islands, too. I immigrated here. You know, we lived up in the attic. I joined the military. I did 20 years in the Army. I got out yeah. and right. I was like, wow, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I had structure for 20 years straight. I didn't have to worry about anything. You have to really think about yeah, anything. Think Everything about anything. was taken care of. Yeah. Right. And that's when I realized for the first time someone mentioned depression. Ah. I didn't realize that I had just gone through the motion. I dealt with domestic violence. I, you know, I, I, I dealt with dealing with my daughter and, um, I never dealt with anything. I just, I think I was kind of like you. Mm -hmm. I was busy. So I just kept on doing the thing. And then when I got out of the military, I was like, wow. 
And that's when, and I think that's why mental illness is important to me because I dealt with most of those issues that everything that we're all talking about. I've dealt with depression, I've dealt with PTSD, I've, I've dealt with domestic violence, I've dealt with all those things. One of the things that you said, I always feel like, and I feel like it's the Jamaican in me mm. that um, I think that's what makes me who I am. That's what catapults me to be better, to do better. And when she asked me to be honest, I was like, really? Why? You know, I didn't think that I had anything to share because I live my life. I don't apologize for anything. You sure don't. I am the type I will cut people off because I refuse to let at this point in my life, anyone mess with my um, goal of being a better person. Yes. 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 It it is so important she was talking about a journey and I, I went to see the therapist I took the medication I did all that but you want to know what worked for me I planted a garden Ooh, wow yes. okay I went back yes. to mother earth yes actually was, didn't you bring home some spices babe from yeah, her garden yeah, like, yes yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I garden yeah I didn't you know, I and I'm not sitting here saying that medication doesn't work for everyone or you shouldn't be on medication. You never stop the medication or do all those things. But I know that that's what worked for me. Yeah. Um, and then I realized that there was more important things in the world. And so that's when I met I met a few people and I started the journey. Um, I meditate like there is no medication. I, I journal, I do all those things. I do crystal therapy. I, I'm learning as I'm going and I'm trying, those are the things that make me better to, to, to do better. So I was a part of a group, kind of, you know how shit is with women and everybody want to do their thing. And so I don't have this huge thing, but I have a, it's, it's a group, it's called Journey Into You. It's on Facebook. Mm -hmm. The and, link will be up, come yeah, out right now. It'll be up later. It's just basically women um trying to understand our um i don't even know how to explain it we are we are the creator the, the mother earth has given us everything that we need to heal ourselves but we had gotten so caught up in the system of society that we've western medicine that mm -hmm. we've forgotten how we used to heal mm -hmm. you know our ancestors used to heal we didn't need all those major things so that's where I find that I'm going with my life is right. understanding my ancestors and what, what they have done and how I can heal and by helping one person mm -hmm. or understanding um, meditation is key. Yeah. To quiet the mind is, 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 is the key yeah. to just listen for a second. Cause what they say is when you listen is when God speaks to you. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. the middle of the night, the two o'clock in the morning when you can't sleep, just, I use Inside Timer. It's an app, you know, nothing fancy. I literally, I started, I would do five minutes and you can cater it to whatever you want to work on this week and whatever you want to listen to this week. And that's what I do all together. I'm still fucked up. <laughs> but, um, Are we all? But that's your story. That's my story. And you're sticking to it. Yes. That's beautiful. Yes. That's beautiful. <laughs> All right. So what I did is I kind of researched, you know, some of the top 10 med um, mental disorders. And I know you guys may have to step out. This was something that was last minute. So if you have to, I totally understand. We 100% appreciate you. So you're okay. Um, okay. So I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about just some of the disorders that are out there. And this is going to kind of tap into some of your personal experiences working in the mental institution, of course, your experiences as well. So how I wanted to kind of divvy it up is I want to first talk about what the symptoms are, just to kind of bring some awareness, let people know. Now, let me say this because my best friend, I love you, Wendy, but my best friend is guilty of this. Don't start going to Google. She, my best friend has had every disease situation. Last week she had cancer. You <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not saying for you to Google or just listen to these symptoms and think that all, all uh, immediately or automatically diagnose yourself. What I want to do is I want to share these things with you so that you realize, number one, you're not alone. Um, and number two, that there are things that you can do to start the steps to, to, uh, to healing. Okay. So first one I wanted to talk about is disassociative disorder. So involves problems with memory, identity, emotion, perception, behavior, and sense of self. Symptoms. Anybody? Symptoms. 
you re that's one of the ones that you really, really see. Okay. Is, is the associated disorder. And I don't know if you remember the movie. What was that guy? Um, this is, it's normally, it, it it's kind of stems from abuse and you kind of, you just shut yourself, you shut yourself yeah, off um, to be away from, from what's going on. What's that movie? Um, the Rain Man? No, it was like the white guy that had all these different whole bunch of white guys, Angela. Splits. Help me out. Splits. 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 Okay. Um, okay. Splits. Yes. That's, it's, that's, it's kind of like you're, you're thinking that you're some, it used to be called something else. Like, um, we kind of think that you're someone else. Okay. Or, you know, um, well, I, I remember um, my first week working because uh, I did outpatient psych and, and, I, and I walked in and and they were doing a Baker Act on a patient. I was like, what? Well, tell, so for those that don't know what Baker Act is, it's you want to tell? It's basically a 72 hour hold that is done on an individual that that is deemed, it could either be their suicidal, homicidal, it could be a, a huge amount of things. So they're held at the hospital. They're brought to the hospital for 72 hours. The psychiatrist has to see that patient within 24 hours. And if the psychiatrist says that that patient stays there and the patient stays there for the 72 hours, we will literally have to go to court. It's not necessarily that. The, that's not, so if the psychiatrist said that they pass, then we have to go to court. If the psychiatrist sees the patient, then that patient is free. The patient is no longer under the Baker Act hold. Um, but I remember there was a lady there and one day she was talking to me as a white woman, and the next day she was a black dude. Oh wow! There was no way you couldn't tell her that, that. she was. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. So to see it is something else. It it's is. On paper is something real. It <laughs> is. It is. It is. It's crazy. Um, what are some of the causes? From what I, I think a lot of it has to do with trauma. Okay. A lot of it has to do with with, with trauma. Treatment. Um, that's one of the hard ones. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to say. Yeah. Okay. There is, I mean, as we say, as we had said in mental health, there is no cookie cutter. Right. There is no one way. Like I said, um, gardening worked for me. It might not work for you. Right. So I think that's where it's important to get the treatment to. Um, and I think that's one of the things I told you. It is important, the therapist and the client relationship, mm -hmm. um, because either you have to be diagnosed you have to be seeing someone and you know come together and decide what treatment works for a patient got it one thing i want to add about therapists is it's important that you research your therapist yes mm -hmm. because some of them are have deals with the drug companies oh, and they're mm -hmm. testing them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they may put you on drugs to like here this may cure you not really trying to figure out and dig out what the real issue is okay. and that's why I mean, I appreciate what she said with the garden because touching the earth is another thing. Going to the beach, you know, going within because it's stuff that we bottled in. We 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 bottled in so much stuff as as we with the traumas that we've gone through. Yeah, like. right. Mm -hmm. So research your doctors. Right. Research. Find out if you have to. I don't know. You, social media has everything. You can find somebody who's gone to such and such doctor. Right. See the Google or the Google reviews about them. Right. Just don't just go anywhere to find it. One, it. one of the things I think I really appreciate about Taraji P. Henson's um, foundation is that she is actually uh, working towards funding people that are like us, um, to, that are more culturally competent, right. um, that are interested in getting into the mental health field. So her foundation is to pay for the schooling um, or provide any type of form of education and just a basic awareness. Now, her I think I mentioned earlier, her foundation was started because her dad actually suffered from uh, mental illness as a result of being a veteran war. And I, I, I think that's probably one of the biggest thing. I think a lot of us, I, for me personally, so my story, I suffer with depression, um, probably still do. Um, because I know that I go in and out, but I'm like yourself. I keep busy. That's my distraction. That is my drug, and it touched me when you said that. I still help. Um, <laughs> you know things that for me, I remember that when I was looking for a therapist, and I, I met this lady, and you know I had great insurance at the time, and I met this uh, Caucasian lady, and I walked into her office, and I sat there, and I'm speaking with her, and I'm talking with her, and I just I disconnected because I'm like woman, you are a white Caucasian woman that doesn't even have a student loan because your parents pay for your shit. And I am a African-American Caribbean lesbian that is dealing with issues of a serious heartbreak from a relationship that I had with a woman. How do you even, I just felt as though that her counseling was just very generic. 
And I just, it wasn't, I just didn't feel connected. When I left there, I felt I was $50, first of all, copay less. <laughs> okay. Um, but I just, I didn't feel healed. I didn't feel help, you know, and I, I researched, I tried, I asked to find, where can I find someone that looks like me? Where can I find a, a therapist that's a lesbian? Where can I find a therapist that's a Caribbean? You know, where can I find a therapist that's black? Where can I find a therapist that truly understands where I'm coming from and is able to come across authentic and really make me feel like you care and know what the fuck you're talking about as it relates to me? And I think that's that's huge. And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people, they don't do it because it's not easy to do that research. It's not. You know, it's it's easier to find, you know, the, the T on Facebook timeline than it is to, you know, to find, you know, a therapist. Um, the other thing, I'm sorry. To yeah. The mm -hmm. other thing about it is as Caribbean, well, African, we're we're hushed about mental health. Mm -hmm. we're, yeah. not, we're supposed to make sure that everything looks proper. Mm -hmm. and don't tell Auntie so and so. Yes. Yeah. You know, you're supposed to look happy. Mm -hmm. So we, we're shamed. Yes. What we are going through. We're yes. shamed to say we're hurting. We're shamed to say we're hungry. We're ashamed to do that. Because we don't want the person next to you to think that you're less than or weak. Yeah. Or weak. Fiona, how do we I was about to say oh, <laughs> perfect timing, Fiona? How, how do we I know, right? She knew, she knew. It's my girl right here. It's my new best friend. No disrespect. I love you. You're my best friend. It's okay. Fiona, how do how do we how do we push through that? Here's the thing, there's a stigma. Mental health is so um stigmatized. Right. Um, nobody comes to you and look at you if you say you have cancer a certain way. Right. Nobody looks at you if you say you have diabetes a certain way. Nobody looks at you if you say you have heart disease a certain way. Right. People look at you a certain way if you say you have a mental illness. Yeah. Now, we have to come to the forefront where we're, we're talking about it. We have to create um, awareness. Yeah. And we have to get to a place where it's it's the judgment is set aside. Yeah way too much judgment about a person is I have family members who have been diagnosed with uh, mental illness right and at first you don't know how to handle it La, she, because hold on don't worry about she she kind of mad you know mm. she kind of crazy exactly. exactly yeah that's exactly. what they do yeah exactly and yeah so all of a sudden it, it it's it's in the neighborhoods and everybody knows and so right. you're like oh, I wonder if she's ever going to have a good relationship yeah. or who's going to accept her. Is the church going to see her the same way? Yeah. And listen, the church is where we go for healing. Yeah. It's one of the places where you find that there's so many judgments. judgments. Hello. And so now we have to look at it and say, where's the love that Christ talked about? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know? And right. so now we have to strip ourselves and, and look at it like, these are human beings that are struggling and most of them are struggling in silence and they never ask to have this disease, right? right? So it's creating the awareness and creating the love because here's the thing, right? People are not asking for help. Mm. Then you find out there is not a lot of help out there. Yeah. So it's a supply and demand situation. Yeah. Because if you're not, True. If you're not True. out there talking about the issues and if people are not, people are struggling, the number of people struggling to find help it's high, but yeah. it's also the, the struggle to find a facility yes. that cares. Yes. Listen, Florida, Georgia, Mississippi, Texas are some of the 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 the, the, the uh, states that have less m m mental health care. Wow. And a research was was done where um, it, it looks at incarceration mm -hmm. and mental health uh, uh, access to mental health care. Right. And it shows that in these um, in, in these states where you find that there are less mental health facility, right. health facilities, the incarceration rates are higher. Wow. You understand? So now you have your, your kid going to school and he has been diagnosed with um, ADHD. Right. And, you know, the teachers, yep. the teachers yep. don't understand how to communicate with these kids because they're not educated on it. And they see them, you know, not paying attention and they think that they're just being defiant. Right. Whereas they're having difficulties paying attention. Right. right? Or communicating or that. communicating mm -hmm. that. And so they expel these kids or they suspend them from school. Right. And when you're suspended, you're twice likely to get into the juvie system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the system is set up against this. And so what it is, is like, as a, as a black people and as, as a race, as a nation, as a society, right. it's, it's incumbent on us to, 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 to yeah. exactly yes. and request that this becomes something that's at the forefront for us. I think the first thing that we want to work on is that we need to help to remove that stigmatism. Oh, yes. 
Yes. And and the preconceived notions and the fears that come along with saying, you know what, something is not right. Mm -hmm. um, because we're not comfortable in saying that. And I think you hit the nail on the head when you said that it's a supply and demand. Yeah. They are not aware of the need of more culturally competent individuals because we're not speaking up and we're not exactly. saying that we need this. Is this this is a great conversation, guys. Yeah. Like this is amazing. Okay, so we actually touched on a lot of some of the different things. One of the things that um I wanted to, because I, I I don't I, I, we can be here for hours. This is a I deep know. conversation. Don't look at your watch. Don't do me. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I wanted to actually go to some questions from some of our viewers. Um, you okay with that? And then we probably would probably dabble into some of the other topics. Okay. Um, what about antidepressants, psych uh, psychiatric medications, and so on? How should I conceptualize the use of those chemicals? I'm gonna speak on that because I think I, I, I introduced it. Um, I, I, I did bring it up. I think that's a personal, that has to be a personal thing between you and um, understanding that the most important thing is, is the psychiatrist that does the medication, that's all they do. Psychiatrists only do the medication. I think that's one of the most important things. Your therapists don't do medication. So it's important that you understand the importance of, I go see my psychiatrist, I get my medication, but you also need to be seeing the therapist at the same time. Because mm. no matter whatever medication that you're taking, you still need to be dealing with those issues mm -hmm. that is causing you to um, to be in the state. You actually you answered are. two questions. That was one of somebody else's yeah. question as well, is why do some people choose to just take the meds and no therapy is that safe? So there goes the answer for that. Once again, it depends on your illness. Right. Once again, it depends on, I took medication. Mm -hmm. I took Wellbutrin at a point in my life where I thought that that's what I needed. Right. And um, you as that individual has to decide. And I took Wellbutrin because it was like, well, that's one of the ones that's not going to mess with your sex drive because, you know, most of the medications will mess with your sex drive. Mm -hmm. So it was important for me that I had a conversation with my psychiatrist. Which one's gonna you want to make sure way, you could tweet it and boot it when you need to. Right. Which one is going to help? And it was Wellbutrin. Right. Was I going to take all the other stuff? Nope, I wasn't going to take them. Um, it's important that if you are taking them, that you work with the mental health provider to either wean yourself off right. or you guys, it has to be a decision that has to be made twofold because some of those medications, particularly ones for anxiety, you have to deal with withdrawal symptoms. You can't just be like, look, and I ain't taking that shit no more because right. you could hurt yourself. Right. So it's important that it's not just, it's not something to be taken lightly. Like I said, Everybody, every individual is different. I am not on medication because I choose to use because I choose to do different things. Okay. Um, at this point in my life, I think the other thing too, if you mm -hmm. don't mind, sure, no, absolutely. Parents, um, parents need to be mindful about um, the medications that they're putting their kids on. Yes. You know, because you know, for kids suffering with that kind of medication, they, they don't have a voice, and as a parent, you're their voice. Right. So not because the doctor says this is what's going to be good for your child that you just go ahead and say, okay, this doctor says it, I'm going to go with it without doing your research and right. making sure that this would be beneficial for your child because they're all pros and cons, but you have to remember not because you and I are suffering from depression, right? That the depression is the same. Same. Right. So I want to talk about something that I think is not talked about a lot. Um, and you know, as women, you know, we are expected to be emotional. If we walk into a facility and say, this is something that I'm dealing with, they were boohoo crying. Like when I was being a little bitch, cause Stacy's here. Um, you know, it's, it's the norm, even though my best friend was cussing me out and telling me I'm a little bitch. But one of the things that I think is very hard, especially for men to do is for men to speak up and say that they're dealing with something, which is why I truly have so much respect for Charlemagne the God when he went on the show and said, this is what I'm dealing with. Um, specifically dealing with sexual abuse. So as, as women, I'm a victim of sexual abuse. I have no problem saying it. Um, and as women, I know that it's easy for us to, first of all, admit to it, um, talk about it, go and see a therapist, especially with our generation. The more of people that I speak with and the more open that I'm about my sexual abuse is the more I realize how many of us have experienced yeah. it. What about our, our black men, right? So what about when you have a black male that was sexually abused by a woman? There are is a huge stigmatism behind it, a lot of issues. They're afraid to talk about it. Man, you a little bitch. You're going to be talking about how you you know, you know you got your pee-pee sucked by a woman. Man, you should have taken it. You know what I mean? There There is this, again, another preconceived notion as to how you're supposed to deal with it. And the reality of it is these experiences are destroying these men. These experiences are making it difficult for them to have healthy relationships what would your advice be, first of all, to the men and how they can 
comfortably start to the road towards healing as a sexually abused male by a woman? I think the first thing is to admit that it happened. To whom? To 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 the, the male. You to yourself. To to, exactly. And okay. you have to tell yourself that it's not your fault. Okay. Because most of the times when these things happen, if you really think about it, it it's an older, it's either an older woman that might have abused a, 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 a boy when he was younger. Right. And so he grew up thinking that I had a sexual experience with an older woman, not mm -hmm. understanding the abuse that came with it. Right. And so even when he came to terms with what might have happened to him, he can't go and tell his friends, you know, I think this such and such or such and such um, might have sexually assaulted me. Right. Because first of all, his friend's going to look like, well, you, are you crazy? Right. You know, She's fine. Look at them titties. Look at the ass. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but not realizing that it's really hurting him. Right. And so the, the thing is, it, it, society has to be, here's the thing, society has to give guys the, the ability or to give them the space to be comfortable reporting these things. We have a long way to go with that. And yes, we do. Yeah. And so, first especially of our all, black men. I know. So first of all, you know, they have to say to themselves, you know what, this happens to me and it really wasn't my fault. Right. And it's acceptance and forgiveness because sometimes they're walking around with the shame and thinking that is something that they did wrong. Right. And they didn't do anything wrong. Right. So it's just forgiveness, you know, for themselves as well. So I don't know. Um, I actually have a question for you, Stacy, for one of my viewers. Um, Stacy Lewis, are you getting counseling? And if so, is it working? Oh man, I ain't getting no counsel right now, but I'm okay. gonna tell you something though. I'm gonna ride what she said earlier. Okay. They out here testing people like guinea pigs. Okay. That's a billion dollar industry that people got going on. And what they're doing is, you, like you said, they're the professionals. Mm -hmm. You're going in for help. So whatever you tell them, whatever diagnosis you get them, mm -hmm. you, you're going to perceive in your mind that they absolutely right. And it might work. But what people don't know is this. You know, I took medication like her, like she did. Okay. I was on Zoloft. I was on. I was on that as well. I was so that person. Yeah. I'm going to show you something. Okay. 98% of a medication got a side effect to it. Yeah. So one for to treat you and the other, and then it's gonna hurt you. Yeah. So they gonna say, well, come back to us if these milligrams need to be stronger, yeah, or lesser. Yeah. Like she just said, yep. Once it get in your bloodstream, yeah. After two to three months, yeah. If you can't get off of it, what's gonna happen is everything you eat, you're gonna throw up. Yep. Your withdrawals are gonna be like you're coming off hair wrong. Yes. And they're gonna force you back on. I've experienced that. So I'm not getting counseling. I'm trying right. to counsel myself because okay. I really believe that I'm like, huh? Oh, uh -huh. Find another route. Okay. Sometimes, but everybody can't do it, like she said. Right. You got to be really strong. I ain't gonna say they, they ain't strong because they can't do it. Right. But you got to find something in your life that you enjoy. Right. That can drift you off from confusion. Okay. And hurting your life. And okay. Take you away from things, and you can focus more better. Okay. So what's gonna happen is they get you on these medications, and they try to increase it or decrease it, and you don't even know where this medication came from. Right. A lot of them are like generic ge medications coming out. Right. That was the real medications in the 90s. Yeah. Right. They, they ain't changing that. Right. Like you had silicone. They don't have silicone no more. They got Risperdal mm. and all these new, these new things coming right. out. And what they're doing is they're giving these ADHD kids yeah. these medications. And what they're doing is by them being kids, their immune system is not strong enough to mm. take these medications. Right. So they're going to say, we're going to give you a cogentin. Right. 10 milligrams. I mean, like a side effect pill. Right. That's going to help out you. They already warning you it's a downfall with this hill. Right. So really, is you winning, winning. Right. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So 20 years later, you don't burn people up. Yeah. You got some medication like I was taking lithium one time. Oh, it wow. Your liver up. Oh, wow. You got to go every month to get your blood drawn to make sure your liver ain't getting disintegrated. You know what I'm talking about? This, I'm going to bet at this junk. Man. I'm not just talking. You I ain't new it. to this. You true to this. I know it. So right. Really, I'm warning everybody out there. All these drugs they give me, like she said, they all could be generic. How they could be this? I mean, it's a billion dollar industry, man. These people got private owned yes. facilities. Man. Yes. Even the, it's even worse than when it comes down to the hospitals that's sponsored by the federal government. Yeah. And you're going in there because you can't afford proper insurance. Right. And what they're doing is supplying you with anything and let us know what's going on with them. How they doing with it? What right. is going to them? Right. It's all guinea pigs. Right. And all this junk getting charted down for years. What is medication doing is the good or the bad. Right. And what it is, whoever got sacrificed in them 10 years or 20 years and they change over to something else, I mean, it didn't work in them 10, 20. So whoever right. that person is, them people is, like you said, 383,000. Right. 
and that's really mainly in prisons and the street and right. poverty neighborhoods. Right. So these people is getting very bright and disintegrated. Right. I just want to give a shout out to Speaker Catherine Mitchell. You've come with some amazing questions. Thank you so much. That was actually from Speaker Catherine Mitchell. Thank oh, you. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate that. Okay. So I want to do, um, before we kind of start to wrap it up, I want to talk to the queens. And when I mean queens, I mean the, 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 the women that are in relationships with our brothers that maybe see some things. Um, and again, we have a perfect example right here, right? So let's say you guys are, were giving advice to Taz and um, Taz, because, you know, pillow talk, she feels as though that, you know, there's definitely some things that her man is dealing with. He doesn't want to seek help. Um, and she doesn't know what to do. That happens a lot. Sometimes the only people that actually know what's going on with our brothers are our sisters, you know, at least they were right or die. Well, y'all see them holding each other's hands back here. They're so in love. I love it. They're so in love. I love it. Let's talk to our sisters really quickly on either what maybe kind of conversations we can have or advice we can give them as to how to help our brothers and be supportive. Well, I'm single, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have a lot of dark friends. Okay. And what, um, I think what I can say is if you're in a relationship with anybody, is you've got to put in the work. Not just the work for the relationship part, but also, I noticed lately that people don't even check how people are doing. They don't really ask that question. Back. So really, how are you doing? They'll be like, how are you doing? All right, so can you do this and that? that? Yeah. But it's like, how are you really doing? Like, right. how is this affecting you? Like, right. I know you got mad at me yesterday. Like, but what why? Happened? What like, was really going on? Okay. Let's, let's Cause I know I burnt the rice, yeah. but at the end of the day, we got more Jasmine in the counter. I can make you another batch. So, right. What was really going on? Is, is it a phone call that you had? You know what, Angela? I can't with you. <laughs> so basically what you're saying is, is, is digging in a little bit deeper, asking those real questions, communication, real communication. Right. Right. Right, right. Angela, any advice for the ladies? I think the biggest thing is both people have to take home Yes. Okay. I think... Um, We've gotten to the point where um, we feel that as women, it's our job to save society and save, but who's saving us? You know, um, so it has to be a twofold. Right. She has to know what he's doing. He needs to be know what she's doing. Because if she do it by herself, eventually it's going to breed resent resentment. It's going to breed something. Um, that person has to want to get help okay. as well. Okay. That is probably... And whatever help it is, not just like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, dude, you need to be on Medicaid. You know, it has to be some kind of give and take. It can't just be her over here saying, you know, I'm here to save you. I'm here to save you. I'm here to save you. But here, he's not even willing to, to plant the garden. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? He's not even willing to go buy the plant. Okay. So it, it, it has to be communication. It has to be twofold. It has to be real right it has to be raw yeah <laughs> okay. thank you for the plug friend <laughs> and it has to be alive. right right oh look at that raw real and all the way live let's clap it up for that fiona your your advice to our our queens because at the end of the day when we think about relationships and men out there you know I, we as black women in relationships with these black men I mean, I'm dating a Cuban, but whatever. Um, you know, we have a lot more influence and impact on really helping our brothers than we, I think, realize. What would your advice be? You know, um, the truth is, I think for us as women, we are such nurturers. Yeah. And that's what, you know, she says. It's it's all about us always wanting to take care of the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we, we want to you know, just take over and take charge and do everything. But the truth is we have to allow the guys to be men. We cannot demasculate them yes. because okay. sometimes we as women, because we're so strong about what we do, right. when we demasculate the guys, then they feel as though they don't have a place and a say so, okay. you know, and they act out. But for us as women is to understand our worth. Okay. Oftentimes we put ourselves to the side because we feel like our job again is to give, give, give. But who is giving to us? Right. Who is who is empowering us? Right. So we have to empower ourselves and we have to make sure that in the process that we don't forget who we are. We are worthy. We are powerful. 
we are worth it. Amen. We matter. Our Amen. dreams matter. We need to get to that other place that we said that we were meant to get to, that God created us to get to. Amen. And so we're not supposed to just subject ourselves to whatever um, situation that we're in. Right. And the fear of stepping out. Right. You know, because, you know, you're in a situation and you, you waited for this person to come. But in the same vein, as you said, if he's not wanting to get help. Right. You can't be helped for somebody if that person does not want it. Right, right. Because I can't go out and seek counseling for my husband right. if my husband does not want to get counseling for himself. Right. So the truth is a partnership, right? Okay, okay. So in everything, you look at it, it's like, okay, I'm working on myself. Honey, you need to work on yourself. Right? Got it. Let's go work on us together. Got it. Because That's beautiful. he sees the, the value in me. Yeah, because I see the value in you. Yeah, let's just do the thing together. Let's be boss people together. Yes, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, I just want to. So, Sonia Anderson says, "Stacy Lewis, you are blessed to have Taz in your life as a supportive partner." So that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. One time. Um. So got so Charlemagne actually in um his interview that he did when he was asked about why he made the decision to see a therapist is exactly kind of what she said he says you know what he says i've been with my wife for 20 something years and what i didn't realize is that i was using her as a dumping ground for all of my issues and because i you know because we see women as these strong individuals and he says he didn't realize what the impact was on her and he said when he realized how it was tearing her down he that's when he made the decision to stop using her as a dumping ground and actually seek professional help so guys, this has been an amazing conversation. Yes, yes. So listen, there's one, I just want to kind of close it up, but I want to give you guys each an opportunity to say something very personal to the viewers. If there was one thing that you can say to our community to help them see the importance in healing and taking that step, what would it be? What is your one message? This is your one chance. What is your one message that you would give to them you're not alone you're not alone we are all dealing with it just find your tribe find that person that you are comfortable with that that you can express yourself to if you're not if you don't trust anybody write it down write it down and burn it but you have to release and just know that you're not alone there is somebody out here who knows what you're going through that loves you even though you feel alone but you're not alone as well Beautiful. Angela? I would say um, you deserve it. Mm -hmm. you, we all deserve to be happy. And, and you need to find that thing that brings you to that place. And whatever it takes to get there, that's the most important thing. Because I think that sometimes we just don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, but we just you need to reach out to someone. It is important. You have to, you have to make that first step. Um, you have to make that first step because you are important and you matter. We all matter. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you, Angela. Fiona? I think for me, it's to say that there's power in choosing you. Power mm -hmm. in choosing you. you. I like that. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 right? <laughs> That's actually my chapter in the book. Okay. You know, there's power in choosing you. It's, it's, you know, if you don't choose you, who is going to? Yeah. yeah, you know, so stand up for yourself. Yeah, be, be stand up and be counted, right. and know that you matter. Yes. I know that you are a, a, a life coach as well, and we're going to be giving you information, but just kind of give them for those people that maybe are not looking where can they reach out to you if they wanted to maybe start fresh for the new year? Well, it's always good to get to the source of the issue, but as a life coach, I deal with your present and your future, and so for me. You can reach me at speakhopeinternational.com. It's going to be there. Or you can call me. It's 954 uh, Does your husband know you're giving out your number? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, um, the New Year's coming. Transformation yeah. needs to happen. Yeah. You have one life. Yeah. One. We have been given one life. Yeah. One. It's, this is our chance. To just live our best life now. It's not about tomorrow. It's not about next year. It's about right now. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Stacy. Over to me. Mm -hmm. My thing is, man, find your foundation, man. Okay. In life, I, I, don't, I ain't going to say if you want to join a spiritual world, church, whatever religion you're in, whatever. find a foundation that you can stand on and be firm on and you believe in it. Yes. 
Yeah. And don't let nobody deter you from what you believe in if it makes you strong. Yes. And don't never be scared of it. Yeah. That's your man, girl. That's your man. You better make sure you give him some later, child. Text me if she don't, because I'm going to text her back and be like, what you doing? <laughs> Taz, I want you to speak to, um, tell them, what, what would you tell us? Your one opportunity to help women out there, help men out there, whomever. He like took it from me. Okay. Because I was going to say personal development and spirituality. Like, okay. You need personal development. And you have personal development, that will definitely get you through. It will take you to a whole nother level mm -hmm. of your own self. Not right. In your, not only in your business or in life, but in your own self. Beautiful. Like, spirituality is huge. And like, yes. Like the, when a person asks, what is he doing for counseling or anything? His personal development and his spirituality. It is. You guys notice that Stacey doesn't curse? You better believe it. Nobody knows. <laughs> you that. guys know I did. Yeah. Stacey doesn't curse. 21 years in prison, charged with murder and a whole bunch of other shit. He doesn't curse. Nobody knows that. I do. Maybe I know. I see everything. Right. You family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Taz. And the bonus, do the work. Do the work. Do the work. Do the work. Whether you have a therapist or whatever, do the work. Yeah. You have to be truthful and just do the work. So I just want to say for me personally, guys, one of the biggest um, things for me that made me so uncomfortable is I never really truly understood or knew who me was. Mm -hmm. I thought that I had to have a, a, a very firm definition on who the hell is Jody, And the most freeing um, piece of knowledge that I think I ever achieved in, in life that has helped me to blossom and continue to grow is that your me is forever changing. Yes, yes, yes. It is forever changing. Oh, yeah. So yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to be fluid and you have to understand that once you may think you have it, it's going to change again. It's not because and you did anything wrong because we're for always evolving. Mm -hmm. So that would be my, my, uh, my, my, my go-to for everyone. This was amazing guys. Let's clap it up for us. Thank you so much guys for joining us on episode nine, mental health, keeping it real and facing all of the demons. I really hope that we were able to touch some people today. You guys were absolutely amazing. Stay tuned. So we actually have an upcoming show episode 10. Um, on December 23rd, of course, you know, New Year's, new resolutions. And we have a really, really great panel of people that are going to be helping us to hit that reset button, not only on losing weight, because Lord knows I need to shut up, Wendy. Oh, Lord knows I lose some weight, um, but also just kind of helping you with, you know, some of the things that we kind of talked about here and kind of finding yourself. So we have a lot of things in store. Make sure that you guys um, like the page, follow us on Instagram. Also, guys, you have some amazing resources right here. Their information is there as well, and they're always going to be open to speak with you. And lastly, but last but not least, let's please help me to give Stacy Lois an amazing first Christmas free. His cash app is there. Send a donation, guys. You know, again, like I said, here on the TV Takeover, we're sending him something here. You have an opportunity to do the same and to bless his brother and bless his family. Once again, guys, the TV Takeover. Thank you. Woo! And it's a wrap. <laughs> We're going to get some pictures. All right. So normally what we do is, what's episode eight? What's it, nine? What are we, nine? So we're going to hold up the nine finger and we're going to take pictures. I need my B&B &B corner. Where's she at? All right, we're gonna hold up the number nine, guys, and do a big sexy smile. Awesome, thank you, guys. It does go by fast. Can we get pictures, everybody?